It has been a year since I unveiled the Taiwan White Water Center. And since that time, I have been working very hard on this project, traveling all around Taiwan, meeting with many large companies and city governments to see how we can bring this project to life. Due to the sensitive nature of projects that are still under development, I haven't really been able to give updates on those projects, but I would like to share with you today a proposal we gave the Kaohsiung city government last year so you can see what we've been working on. So we proposed building the park on Pier 10 in Kaohsiung City. And in addition to whitewater rafting, it was also gonna have one of the world's largest man-made lagoons complete with surfing scuba diving free diving beach with real waves on it it was going to be amazing now before you get too excited i just want to make it clear that it didn't make it past the initial stages due to the complicated ownership of the land however we really put a lot of work into this project and so i'd really like to share it with you and also because we've already started working on a new proposal for another location in, in a different city and a lot of the sports and facilities that you see in this proposal are going to be carried over to the new one we envision a multi-sport out Outdoor Adventure Center in Kaohsiung City with whitewater rafting at its core, but also including other sports like rock climbing, canyoning, and mountain biking. But the coolest thing is because Kaohsiung is a harbor city, it means that we can use salt water instead of fresh water for the whitewater rafting, and we can incorporate other sports such as free diving, scuba diving, sailing, and of course, surfing. Our main partner in this project is American Olympian and engineer Scott Shipley. Hello, Taiwan. This is Scott Shipley, Olympic athlete, and we are going to bring whitewater parks to Taiwan for you to do as a part of your everyday life. Who is the world's leading adventure sport park developer and has built such projects as the U.S. National Whitewater Center, the Montgomery Sports Center, which is already achieving its goal of attracting high-tech companies to Montgomery. Thursday at Montgomery Whitewater, city, county, and state officials revealed the over $800 million dollar data center. And I think this marks a shift in Montgomery because it puts us now in the center of the conversation for knowledge-based economy jobs. And the Lee Valley Whitewater Center, which was used for the 2012 Olympic Games. But we have many people working on different aspects of the park, and we'll get into that in more detail in another video. First, a quick overview of the park. The site we're proposing to build it on is the area adjacent Pier 2 in Kaohsiung City. This is a beautiful piece of land right downtown on the harbor, well connected to public transportation. And upon seeing it, Scott Shipley immediately exclaimed that if it was built here, this would become the most premier water sports center in the world. The total land area here is about 17 hectares with the mountain biking trails being built off site and connecting to the main campus with already existing bike trails. Taking up most of the space is the Pump River for whitewater rafting and a variety of other sports. The way it works is there's a high pool and a low pool and the water flows between them through two different channels via gravity. The longer channel is less steep for beginners and families, while the shorter channel is more steep and offers a more thrilling ride. When they get to the bottom, they will get on a conveyor belt which takes them back up to the top. The water, in this case salt water, is also pumped from the blower pool to the upper pool where the cycle continues again. The rapids are created by Scott Shipley's patented rapid blocks technology, and this type of whitewater is safe for everybody to enjoy because we've taken all the hazards that occur in nature and the water can be turned off with the touch of a button. On the other side of the park is the canyoning experience, where we have a series of man-made waterfalls. They may look natural, but this is not actually rock. This is a hollow steel structure covered in painted polystyrene. It's a very fun experience for beginners and families, but also like the Whitewater River, it is an ideal place for enthusiasts to hone their skills, experts to practice, and also to do rescue and other technical training. Now, this by itself is already the world's best whitewater raft park. We don't need to do anything beyond this. However, the natural environment is such that whenever you get there, you're going to see this beautiful pool here and you're going to think, I just want to jump in. I want to row SUP in there. I want to swim in there. I want to scuba dive in there. But you're not going to because it's just not clean. This is the uh, unfortunate situation is that this is an industrial area. This is like previously used to be a port. And so this water is not quite up to recreational standards. But we have a way to fix that. 
by putting a dam in soft sand beach at one end, we can enclose this pool and fill it with the same clean seawater that we use for whitewater rafting. This will create a natural lagoon roughly the same size as Flowing Lake in Taidong City. We can also put an artificial reef in it with coral and endemic fish that are like local to the area. And also because this is uh, the art center, we should definitely also put in there underwater art. And it'll create this amazing area where people can go hang out on the beach, they can go swimming, they can go scuba diving, they can go free diving, they can go sailing, SUP, and you can do it year round every day in this crystal clear protected bay. It's right in the heart of the city, literally with an MRT stop right on it, regardless of the weather because it is protected from waves and other anomalies. How cool is that? Now, I don't want to get too much into the technical details about how this works, so I'll give you a very rough overview. Basically, at one end, there are large tanks of water which open valves and drop that water into this lagoon, which the artificial reef forms into a wave one to three meters high, which is determined by the amount of water you drop at one end and where people can surf. And then that wave propagates through the system and that energy of the wave dissipates through the system. So by the time it gets to that beach on the other end, you have these really tiny, nice lapping waves where families and children can hang out and it feels like a real beach because you have that wave motion and you have that wave sound. And this also has the secondary function of circulating the water in the pool. This is a living system. It has a lot of marine life in it that we need to keep happy and healthy. So we brought in marine biologist, Dr. Heather Spence of the US Department of Energy to help consult us on this project. And as we pump new water into Lagoon, it overflows back into the harbor. So we don't have to do really complicated systems of cleaning it. Essentially just moving water from one place to the other because it shares all this infrastructure with like the whitewater rafting and various other aspects of the park. The marginal cost of adding the surfing into this system is about 15% of the cost of it would be to build a surf park on your own. And actually there's a lot of these interconnected efficiencies in the park where infrastructure is shared between different sports and it's really, really cool. And what it means is that the cost is a lot lower, which is really important because this is a city park and we want to make these activities as cheap and inexpensive as possible for the people using it so they can use it more often, uh, even daily if you wanted to. So pretty cool, huh? I especially like how it interacts with the different facilities in Kaohsiung, like the cruise terminal and the ex exhibition center and the pop music center. I get emails all the time, people saying, okay, we have 800 people that we're bringing from overseas. What exciting thing can we do with 800 people? We'll pay you lots of money. <laughs> say like, look, it doesn't matter what your budget is. There's no exciting water sports activity that we can do with your group and still be safe. But with this whitewater center, like it's so easy. We can take a couple thousand people an hour just on the whitewater rafting river alone. It removes 90% of the headache for all of these event organizers. And then they can just focus on having the best event they want to have. You're going to see a lot of really fun things happening in Kaohsiung and also just how central it is. So everybody in the city could just use it as daily workout place with the MRT, light rail, and ferry terminal all connecting it. And also the bike lanes that go up and down Love River and over to Monkey Mountain where there could be a downhill mountain biking area. I didn't want to make this video too long. So also I cut out a section about how that would interact with the education department, schools, youth groups, these kind of things. Uh, but everything about that will also be carried over to a new location as well. Uh, you may have noticed that in 2024, I didn't post that many videos on my YouTube channel. Sorry about that. A major reason is because I have been working on this project. I put about three months of my time into this project in 2024. We visited 13 parcels of land in four different cities. And also there has been just a lot of research that's gone into this project and communications with teams both inside and outside Taiwan. I really want to thank everybody who has helped produce artwork or given advice or contributed financially. That has helped us get to this stage so far and we're still moving along. There really is a lot going behind the scenes. Thanks so much for your support. It's really been meaningful and to help me you know, push through with this project, which to be honest has been a, a difficult undertaking. Fast forward to September, 2025. I am still here. I am still working on this. We currently have a site which is under zoning review because the land needs to be changed into Yochi and we have 2.5 more locations which are in early stage discussions. If you want to see this project built in a city near you, the most helpful thing you can do to support it is to share this video and spread the word so the people who are in charge of the zoning process and approval process know that this is something that the people want. So thank you very much. I hope all of you have a fantastic day.